Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. It's good to see all you ladies here today. My goodness. Been looking forward to this service for a long time. Especially Sister Carson being here. She has blessed our hearts. The times that I've heard her, I tell you, she spoke to my heart. And I'm just looking for a mighty move of the Holy Ghost today. Amen. Let's everyone stand. Praise God. So good to see all of our visitors, Sister Frances and this lady. I did not introduce myself, but anyway, all you visitors, Karen. Sister That's Karen, my cousin Karen from Pensacola. Thank okay. you for coming today. Good to have you today. Praise God. In Jeremiah chapter nine and verse seventeen says, "That saith the Lord of hosts, consider ye and call for the morning women." that they may come and send for cunning women, that they may come. Hallelujah. Well, I think I consider myself a cunning woman sometimes. We have to be to be able to battle in the battle that we do today for our children and for those that we love and care about. That they may come and let them make haste and take up a wailing for us. That our eyes may run down with tears and our eyelids gush with waters. For a voice of wailing is heard out of Zion. How are we spoiled? We are greatly confounded because we have forsaken the land and because our dwellings have cast us out. Yet hear the word of the Lord, O ye women, and let your ear receive the word of his mouth, and teach your daughters wailing, and every one her neighbor lamentation. For death has come up into our windows, and it is entered into our palaces to cut off the children from without, and the young men from the streets. Speak, thus saith the Lord, even the carcasses of men shall fall as dung upon the open field, and as a handful after the harvest man. And none shall gather them. But thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, and let not the mighty man in his might, let not the rich man glory in his riches. But let him that glorieth glorieth in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. Hallelujah. That I am the Lord which exercise love and kindness and judgment and righteousness in the earth for in these things I delight saith the Lord hallelujah hallelujah praise God praise God Lord we want to give you pleasure today we want to give you glory and honor for you're so worthy of our praises God we thank you for your blood we thank you for your mercy we thank you for your judgments god lord help us to offer this sacrifice of praise unto thee today lord we invite your holy presence in this service god help us to hear your voice god and help us lord to know your voice in the day when there's so many voices around us god in the name of jesus hallelujah Come and let us worship Him. Praise God.
person standing next to you just hold their hand put your hand on their shoulder whatever you feel like doing today you don't have to just just a suggestion but I don't want you to pray for yourself today I want you to pray for the person that you're connected to right now if you're not connected to somebody just pray for somebody near you and pray that the Lord is going to pour out on each and every one that's in this service today I feel a connection this morning with the Holy Ghost I don't know about you but I know he's in the room today amen Let's just give him honor. Let's just give him praise today, God. I praise you, Lord. Jesus. Oh, I have this confidence because I've seen the faithfulness of God Pull the seal inside the storm The promise of the shore And I trust the power of your word Enough to see your kingdom first Beyond the barren place Beyond the ocean waves Oh, when I walk through the waters I won't be overcome When I go through the rivers I will not be drowned My God will make a way So I am not afraid 
sharing victory.
God has really been dealing with me about pouring out onto others, the younger generation. Um, I'm a Sunday school teacher, been a Sunday school teacher since I was 16, probably. And But it was more, like more, be more intentional about it with this younger generation, younger girls coming up. And so he'd been dealing, I was praying about that. And uh, then begin to pray for my kids, Lord, send someone to pour into them. And, and he simply told me, pour into my children and I will pour into your kids. Wow, wow. So I just wanted to share that with you ladies, that I was like, wow, thank you, Jesus. Um, so just busy ourselves with pouring into others, be more intentional with it. And as I began to pray about that, the Carsons came to mind. Because I remember when Grady and I first got married, um, we sat down after a Louisiana camp meeting service with Brother Carson, and I think his, the son was there too, and he spoke several simple things to me that night that no one had ever took the time to do before, and it has stuck and helped me on so many, so many days, like, I, that comes to mind, and so, like, I will always be grateful for that, and then me meeting Sister Carson later and every time I've sat to chat with her we take her out to eat after church or whatever she's intentional about that like speaking into Grady and I's lives and then she has others that she talks about mentoring like her daughter-in-law here and I've heard her mention people that she's mentored but not only that but she has mentors that she looks to and it's just such a beautiful cycle and like so as I was praying she came to mind and just God has really been dealing me with that and I want to thank you for showing me that in your husband and being intentional about pouring into into others lives and I want you to come and come pour into us today yes amen Oh, come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Oh, come on, he's worthy. Oh, come on, we can do better than that. Come on, he's worthy. He's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, what an honor it is to be here today, and thank you for the wonderful music. Fantastic job. Thank you, uh, Sister O'Neill, the First Lady of this church. Thank you for the honor to be here today. I truly appreciate it. It is truly, it's always an honor to stand uh, before the people of God. But Brother, brother O'Neill, he, he couldn't have snatched himself a better wife. The Bible says when you find a wife, you find a great thing. And, and Pastor O'Neill is tremendously blessed. You are a great woman of God. And these ladies are blessed. I know they already know that. Amen. 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 Um, 
thank you for the opportunity to come again and I am a very unconventional speaker. They were asking me if I had a title or a scripture, and uh, it all depends on how God moves upon me. So I don't have, I'm not gonna give you a cookie cutter sermon today, but I do feel like I've heard from the Lord, and I feel like God's going to help some of us in the middle of trouble. Um, pain is a tremendous teacher. And uh, most of us spend our whole life running from pain. Um, but I learned one day, uh, instead of running from pain, I did something so foreign to most human beings. And one day I just planted my feet and I turned around and pain hit me square in the face. And I just reached out my arms and embraced pain. I know Payne was totally shocked, like, oh my goodness, what is she doing? But something changed that day, and, and I believe today is going to be a game changer for many of you today. I believe this in the Holy Ghost. I absolutely believe that I am ordained by God to be here today, just for you, just for this church. Out of all the places I could be, God brought me here today. And I feel honored to that. I'm so glad to have my son here and my future daughter-in-law, who I love deeply. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes a lot of people have in-laws and outlaw problems and <laughs> but I am so happy here to stand today and say I love my future daughter-in-law yeah that that's a miracle in itself come on somebody you ain't saying nothing cuz you sit next to her I know but you know <laughs> yeah 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 that's what I thought I'm teasing <laughs> But I am blessed. I am blessed. You can go ahead and be seated. I was praying um, about coming today, and God began to deal with me about something. I am very, um, uh, something that I usually don't speak about. Steve, put me on a timer. I don't want to go super long today, buddy. <laughs> Brother, Grady, Brother Grady said, now, he's a woman. I can't hardly take it if they're not having a move of God. And I wanted to say, Brother Grady, do you think we're coming to not have a move of God? <laughs> Don't tell him I said that. I owe him one. He's honoring his a day is long, but y'all know that too, don't you? You don't have to say amen. That's okay. I need all the amen I got. <laughs> I'm going to get him, bless God. <laughs> so I'm going two hours today. No, I'm teasing. But uh, I'm familiar with the story. I begin to dive in and study uh, in 1 Samuel. The reason I didn't give you a scripture is because really the first and second chapter is so indicative of something that we all face a lot. How many of you are familiar with the story of Hannah and uh, Penina? To me, this is a very, um, it is a very painful uh, story. It's a story of someone who wants to have a child and can't. There's nothing more painful than wanting something that seems withheld from you. I went and began to uh, scan over this chapter and, and consecutive chapters and I was reading and I was going over and, and the only thing that kept emerging was that God specifically had shut up her womb. There's nothing more frustrating than when you go through something that you have no, you have no control over. Right. You know, it's one thing for me to be in control and maybe I'm just in a, in a snafu in a short period of time. But Hannah's name was something very interesting to me. Hannah's name was it meant grace. Now, that sounds fine and dandy, but Penina's name meant jewel. Now, I thought, how interesting.
interesting to me because we say grace is a beautiful thing. And yes, grace is beautiful. But Penina was a jewel. It makes sense that she was the one who was having children. A jewel always produces children, right? But here we have a woman who is simply stuck as grace. And grace can't really seem to get her anything. The Bible says that God had specifically shut up her womb. Now to me this is frustrating because if I knew why God had shut up my womb, maybe I could fix it. But there are times in my life God does things that I don't agree with. I don't understand and if I'm not careful as a human being, I can get sideways with God. And you know Panina had to really kind of rub it into Hannah's face. I'm the jeweled. I'm the sparkle. I'm the diamond. Look who I am. I'm producing. And yet no matter what you do, you're just stuck with grace. You're stuck with nothing. You're stuck with pain. You got to know every night she went to bed and here Panina, the jeweled one, the sparkled one, the thin one, the lacy one. You know the one who has the everything together. She's producing everything she wants. But yet, here Hannah remains. Barrenness. And over and over again, it says more than once that God specifically had closed her womb. You got to be careful that you don't allow the enemy to come into your life and torment you because you don't understand God's timing. I watch more people and it's a bad thing in the church. Why do the wicked prosper? I don't know why the wicked prosper, but as a Holy Ghost filled woman of God, I cannot get my eyes fixed on those who it seems like don't deserve the blessings of God. But sometimes I gotta close my eyes and I gotta hold on to the everlasting mercies of God. It doesn't make sense. I remember when I went through 15 years of so much sickness and pain. You gotta watch it. The enemy always uses people the closest to you. You know what I'm talking about. Now think about it. Why would the enemy use people who are far from you? But I learned that it's the people stand. I learned that it's the people who are the closest to me that can inflict the worst kind of pain. You can't inflict that kind of pain over there to me. No, your pain is limited. So a lot of times the enemy will use people the closest to you. And I hate to be a bearer of bad news, but the enemy will even use your own family against you. Oh, I, I see how it is. Y'all, y'all save. Y'all got saved families. I understand. I get it. Wow. But not all of us have that luxury. And I learned as I matured in Christ that the enemy sometimes uses people the closest to me because I tend to gravitate to the people I'm the closest to. Just because you're close to someone, never underestimate your adversary. He is called the devil. I have people tell me all the time, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So you're telling me that the enemy 
can use church people? Absolutely. Ask Job. God, everything else was killed. But yet the crazy woman he's left with. The one who's the closest to him. Says, why don't you just curse God and die? Where do you think she got that thought from? Wait a minute. I remember a conversation in heaven. And Satan said to Job, if you'll just let me touch him, I promise you, I'll get him to curse God and die. you got to be careful. Everything you let come out of that mouth of yours. Because sometimes the things that come out of your mouth. They're not inspired by God. That's why you gotta pray. That's why you gotta fast to make sure you're not a vessel for the enemy to use. And I thought, God, why do you kill all the, 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 the crazy, the good people, and you leave us with the nuts? Why do you take her, God? Think about it. Come on, I know we don't want to talk about it. I know y'all safe, but you know there's somebody in your life you wish Jesus would take home. <laughs> and those of you who can't, liar, liar, pants on fire. <laughs> we can repent afterwards, bless God. <laughs> so pain plays an important role in the process of destiny you try to have somebody that's got a great destiny without pain it's never going to happen I can spot somebody who's gotten down the road and how they got there I have no idea because they're arrogant they're not long suffering and I can tell pain was never there teacher but if you watch somebody like that long enough uh, they'll self-destruct uh, they'll end up in a hole uh, and then you sweet people who are going through pain uh, saying God you missed it with me uh, no God didn't miss it with you uh, I tell you just to hold on just a little bit while just a little bit longer cause your pain uh, has a purpose that's gonna push you uh, into a destiny come on and clap your hands to the Lord come on that pain's got purpose come on that pain's got purpose you know it had to be painful Hannah here she was no children she had to listen to Panina at night go to sleep my baby go to sleep my baby while she was laying over in her bed no children there's nothing worse when you're walking through the middle of hell and everything else around you is prospering but you it's a hard thing I know Hannah had to go to bed and cry her eyes out every night. But on the way to the promise of God, there's always pain. And there's no getting around it. I don't care what you do. If you're going to be called by God, you're going to experience pain. There's going to be pain. No matter what you do, there's going to be pain. And if you're going to accomplish anything in God, you're going to have to go through the school of pain. I don't like it. You don't like it. But this is God's economy. You know, we talk about there being a weight to glory. But yet we never associate weight with pain. My son likes to work out. And I was telling him the other day, you know, you, you, you don't seem to be in any pain. Maybe you need to up your workout because... Uh, you know, you know, you look good and everything and your muscle, you know, they pop, you know, it looks okay. But I don't see you having pain. And, 
and maybe you got to a place, you know, this isn't prospering any, you know, and uh, you well, I'm doing fine. I said, well, you know, let's just up a little. He upped it up, and the next day, you know, he gets out of the bed ever so gingerly. But pain is producing something bigger, and if you don't got no pain, I question the validity of whether you're really a child of God or not. That's how I can tell who's really anointed and who's not by those who got pain. Don't let pain insult you. Oh, no, no, no. Don't mistake in pain for pitiful. Did you hear what I said? Just because you got pain doesn't make you pitiful. You need to look the devil square in the eyes and say, you know what, Jack? You should have left me alone. You should have never touched me. You should have never made me go through it. You should have never attacked my marriage. There's purpose in pain. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. If you're married, there's going to be pain. Yeah, see, all, all the married women, they laughed. And all the single, you know, they're they not laughing. Because they want to be married. Until you get married. I, I'm just teasing. Up. Well, kind of. <laughs> Oh, I just, I just wish I was married. Oh Lord, it's not fair. Everybody in the church married, Lord. Oh Lord, I just wish I could get married. God, it's not fair, Lord. He, he's so handsome. It's not right, Lord. They all married. God, he's so cute. Lord, give me a husband, God. I don't like this pain of being alone. And then all of a sudden, you have a pretty wedding day, and it only lasts for like three hours, and then three days later you like oh God if you don't deliver me out of this mess God I'm going to pull his eyebrows out God if you don't deliver me Lord I swear I'm going I'm to kill him God I'm going to hurt him God come on somebody don't sit up in here act like you all pious yeah you know somebody has snitched your husband girl we know how it is so you can be married and have pain and you can be single and have pain you can have children and have pain and you cannot have children and have pain no matter what phase in life you go through you can have pain yes, but pain is the process that brings you into destiny now some of you are going through some things in life they're very painful but you got to understand after you come through a surgery that recovery is painful I remember I had uh, some female surgery done and they cut me from hip to hip. It took me a year and a half to recover. Come on. Come on. Recovery is painful. Recovery is painful, but it's a good pain. Come on. Be careful in the middle of your pain that you don't become a professional victim. Whoa! Yeah. Ouch! Come on, man. preach. Oh, I know you can't say nothing right now. But be careful in your pain that you don't become a professional victim. It's always me. They, they look. They talking about me. Look here. They go again. Look. They talking about. I know they talking about. They laughing at me. Girl, get a life. They don't even see you, baby. I know they looking at me. They talking about me. I know they are. Uh uh. They ain't talking about you, girl. Come on. Come on. 
But if you're not careful, the enemy will help you get into a place of victimized mentality. Everybody's looking at me. No, they not. Everybody's chasing me. No, they not. I had somebody I was trying to help and God was like, girl, you better go on. Why you think I want to hit and win on? You can't help some people. Now, I know you're going to think that's impossible, but I'm going to tell you right now, there are some people you can't help. I know, you sitting by her, you can't say much. But listen, you better get it in that brain of yours. Now I know we're all soul winners and we love Jesus and our heart's so good. And my God, we just love everybody. But the better you get it in your mind, you are not going to turn everybody around. You can spend all of your energy and your effort going to bed crying, waking up crying, going to bed stressed, waking up stressed over people you can't. So quit trying. You're killing everybody else. You're killing us. You need to smile. You were created to smile. You were created to cry always. Lift up thine countenance, O woman of God. Get away from the negative. I feel this in the Holy Ghost. Some of you are struggling because you, you got yourself surrounded with people who suck the life out of you. Some of you are too nice. You got to learn to shut the door. You didn't hear me. Shut the door. Your choice. But I ain't waking up every day crying. Ain't happening. Just for them to turn around and treat me like a jerk tomorrow. And treat me like a jerk on Monday. And treat me like stupid on Tuesday. No. No, 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 no. Ain't happening here. But understand, there's some people you can help. And there's some people you can't. So move on, baby. Tell your neighbor, say, move on. Come on, tell your other neighbor who will take it. Say, move on. So when you have a surgery, somebody, how many of you ever had surgery? Boy, you ever, I, I remember when I had my right rotator cuff. Don't have that surgery. Number, number one, that was the worst pain ever. But worse than that, number two, my husband had to do my hair for three months. <laughs> funny it wasn't funny how many know brother Carson now tilt your head sideways men and hair usually don't go together my husband will fix my hair my knot will be on my side I'm like what part of the top of my head are you not finding like oh Jesus I had to go into intercession just to survive it wasn't the pain of the surgery it was the pain of watching him do my hair every day I was like God deliver me God take me right now Jesus come on. Come on. so you know 
Recovery is painful, baby. I'm telling you. But recovery serves a purpose. You think you're going to recover without pain? Sometimes the deeper the surgery, the deeper the recovery. But can I tell you, healing hurts too. But pain is healing with purpose. Some of you need to write this down. But hear what I'm telling you. Pain is healing with purpose. It's healing with purpose. And sometimes before it gets better, it gets worse. But pain is a midwife to purpose. Pain makes you appreciate being well. You're giving birth to that baby, it costs you something. How many of you have children? You give birth to children. My God, I'm trying to hurry, I promise. And how many of you remember the labor? They teach you to breathe and... Lord have mercy. I don't know what nut job come up with that thing. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember. I'm, I'm right in the middle of pushing. I'm trying to hurry. I, I, I'm right in the middle of trying to push this baby, you know. Stephen weighed nine pounds and his shoulders were like, they were as wide as his pulpit. And I was like, oh, Jesus. I gave birth to like a, I don't know, a Chicago Bears linebacker. God, I, what, what the world? And then they was trying to do everything. And this child caused more pain, I'm telling you right now. And so they, you know, you got something this big trying to come out. And they say, breathe. I wanted to grab him so anointed by God. And just squeeze and say, you breathe. <laughs> But I didn't. I had a Holy Ghost. I was good at I thought it, though. But, you know, I was okay. But, you know, Stephen, he's, he's, he's trying to make his entrance into the world. And listen, if you go to have a baby, that, that I learned why they don't let you take nobody in there. Yeah, they don't let people go in there but your husband. That's good. My mama and my mother-in-law were in there. Don't do that. That was crazy. My mother-in-law was on the front. She was rubbing my stomach. I don't know what she was doing. My mama was on the back rubbing my back. And then my husband's in my ear saying, breathe. And I was like, God, I want to kill them all. Who first? Lord, show me. Show me the one. Show me. I Show me. God, I want to breathe, all right? And so I remember, I remember him saying, okay, it's, it's getting close. I, I, I can see the baby's head. And they said, push. And I, I don't know. I, I got so excited. I just was wanting, well, I didn't mind my husband, but I was wanting the other two nuts to get out of the room. And that, that, that baby was coming. I was so glad. They said the head's starting to crown. And so, you know, you're in bed and got them rails. And so they were like, it's time to breathe. You need to push. And I remember my husband, he come up in my ear to tell me to breathe right when I went to grab for them rails. I went grab them rails and I was torquing down for the long haul. That baby was coming. I was tired of being rubbed on. And I said, I'm telling you the Holy Ghost, I torqued down on that bed rail and my husband was like, baby, you gotta let go. And I was like, breathe. I was like, I'm in it for the long haul, baby. No way. Love is her. He laid out flat on the floor. No, I'm teasing. I was wishing he was. But listen, tell me, you start giving birth to something, it is painful. Having a child is painful. And sometimes uh, what God's doing in you, uh, you're about to give birth to something uh, and it feels like God's going to kill you. Uh, but can I tell you, uh, take a deep breath. Uh, just push one more time. Uh, come on, somebody. Uh, don't lay back. Uh, don't quit coming to church. Uh, don't stop shouting. Uh, don't stop singing. Uh, but just push uh, one more time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So... You hold that baby in your arms, that baby costs something. But progress is painful. Sometimes you look at people, I have people say all the time, 
Boy, you're so anointed. I wish I could be like you. No, you don't. Come on. Come on. Don't say that. Come on. Don't say that. Because behind every great anointing is great pain. Come on. Everybody wants glory, but they don't want the road of suffering it takes to get there. And I know God's working something in this church. And I tell you what I see. I see a whole bunch of mighty anointings in this city, in this church. Uh, that's why I see so much pain. Uh, you see pain. Uh, I don't see pain. Uh, I see the anointing. Uh, I see the anointing. Uh, I see the anointing. All you see is tears. All you see is sleepless nights, but all I see is a Hannah and a Mary. I see an Elizabeth. I see a Rebecca. I see a, I see all kinds of anointing. Don't let your pain intimidate you. Don't let your pain intimidate you. But you gotta know, she was wanting that baby. Hannah was wanting that baby. But pain will drive you to the presence of God. Be careful. I want to issue a proclamation or an alarm. Be careful. We got too many outs in this world. We got too many things that keep us busy. I talk to people all the time. Please help me. But what they really get, they just want to get away from pain. But I'm going to tell you what, some of the best prayer meetings i ever been in in my life is when I hurt the worst, it drove me to my knees. I got an intercessory prayer with God. I cry my eyes out. I give it all to God. I get up. There are times I've done it and get up and go on and all of a sudden that burden come back on me, drive me back to my knees in 30 minutes more. I don't care how many times you got to go to your knees. You got to go to your knees till you get that monkey off your back. But listen, you'll never be in the presence of God that you won't be affected. I prayed so many times. There have been times you would walk into a service and somebody would say, there's something different. I see a glisten. I see a sparkle. What is it? It's not me. It's the anointing of God. But you'll never be in his presence that he does and give it to you back. Right, right. So let pain propel you. Let it drive you. You ever have a little child and they touch something so hot? They say, it only takes one time. That baby don't have to speak no English. Oh, shh. The baby knows. The baby knows. Pain's trying to produce something to where you say, okay, God, I don't understand. I don't understand. But you've got to trust him. I wish God's economy was different. I wish my anointing could just come through good times. Laughter. Please don't mistake in what I'm telling you here today. Now, life doesn't have to be bad. That's not what I'm saying. But I felt so strong in the Holy Ghost. Some of you are so tired. So I feel deeply in the Holy Ghost. You're so tired. But there is going to be a restitution. You hear what I'm telling you in the Holy Ghost. It will not always be this way. God is a God of balance. I know it feels like this. I know it feels like this. But you give God enough time. You hear what I'm telling you. God is not an unjust God. Is He just? Yes. I, that's three of you. Is he just? Yes. Is he right? Yes. Is he perfect? Yes. Then that means God is a God of balance. Yes. So I don't know. You may be crying for six months, but I promise you God will give you 12 months of laughter. You may feel like you're forsaken for 18 years, but God will give you years of laughter. Some of you may feel stuck, but you're only stuck for a little bit. God's about to turn it around.
So all of a sudden, Hannah goes to the temple. She's been going and making sacrifices and praying. And listen, some of you who are prayer warriors, you get it, you understand. How many of you went to pray? Your lips moved, but your voice said nothing. She was in the temple praying. You know, she was in a bad place. Here she was in the temple. You got Hophni and Phineas sleeping around with women, doing all kinds of crazy places in the temple. And here Hannah finds herself in one of the worst conditions. But sometimes God don't even start working in your life till the conditions get you straight. God works in the middle of chaos. You hear what I'm telling you? Some of you waiting for it to get perfect for God to work. No, God's already working, baby. I know you in the middle of hell. You right in the middle of the fire. I know you say you can't take one more minute, but God's right in the middle of that pain. He's right there. So pain is the midwife to purpose. But without the combination of pain and passion, you'll never be anybody. Hear what I'm telling you. If you have all passion, I know these kind of people. If you're all passion, you'll ever, never be anybody. But if you have all pain, you'll never do it again. Ooh. Oh, ooh. Come on. So pain and passion are midwives to the purpose of God. Genesis 3 and 16 said, And unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception, and thy sorrow shalt thou bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband. You got to know that God is the God of trouble. Not just the God of peace. We always say, well, God's just always in the peace. But let me tell you something. I was praying about something not too long ago. I said, God, please, please. God said, I'm in the pain. I'm right there in the pain. Why didn't God show up before them three Hebrew furnace people got in the furnace? Why not? That would have been great. Why didn't God show up before he, Daniel got in the den of the lions? That's not how it works. But in your deepest, darkest, most fearful place, if you'll open your eyes, God is right there. And we get our focus on so much pain, we miss our interaction with God or an angel sent by God. And some of you are waiting for the conditions to change. And God is saying, the conditions are perfect. I'm here right now. Ask me, what do you need? Reach out. Believe. Trust me. I'm right here. I know it got hotter. I know your husband left you. I know you lost your baby. I Just look around. I'm right there. Yeah. I'm right there. So, the Bible's not full of peaceful stories. I don't know who reads their Bible, but it ain't full of peaceful stories. Tornadoes, storms, crippled people. The Bible is a bloody book. It's not some nighttime story you read to your children. They went and killed everybody. Killed the women. Killed the babies. All because they said, well, you're not going to stop. We're not going to let them stop us from getting between us and God. We're going to kill everybody. So the Bible's not just full of peace and getting you out. The Bible's full of a bunch of people who experienced pain and got thrown in prison, got stripes, had all kinds of trouble. But yet we look at every one of their lives and say, my God, they were some of the most anointed people in the word of God. you got to understand, trouble is your friend. Trouble is your friend. 
doubles your friend. So when God begins to multiply children, the Bible said He multiplies sorrow. You get it? You can't have children without sorrow. But sorrow brings forth. Tell me, what does sorrow bring forth? Children. Children. I don't know anybody. I remember when I had my first baby, and I'm trying to hurry. I'm at the end. And, and <clears throat> I was young. They should have moved this lady way down. I don't know why they put her next to me. And I'm not like a really emotional person. I have a huge pain tolerance. I have both my kids natural. I didn't have no epidural. I'm a tough woman. Well, really, I'm not tough. I just don't like needles, so, you know. <laughs> but it sounds great. That's good, man. I'm tough. But, I, but this nut job, I, they put this lady next to me, and I'm telling you, it sounded like somebody had taken her bottom lip and stretched it over the top of her head and stretched it all the way down and caught it on the back of her heel. I don't know what she was having in there, but she was like... And her sweet little husband, I could hear him, honey, just breathe. Oh, ah! And my husband was like, baby, don't listen. <laughs> baby, baby, don't listen. That nurse said, that lady's crazy in there. So, you know, I really got nervous then. I'm like, oh, Jesus, I was preparing. I didn't know if I could scream that loud or that long. I was like, I don't know if I can even do it, make it sound good, you know? <laughs> and so... I started having that baby, and I was waiting, man, because I was, I was ready to tell him, Get out! But that never came. It was painful, sure. It was painful. It was painful. Men don't understand this. Y'all close your ears. You ain't even supposed to be here anyways. <laughs> but... Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. But I learned. Just hold in there. And I kept in my mind sorrows producing a child. Oh, my God. I can't wait. I hope he has curly hair. I hope he has blue eyes. Oh, my God. I can't wait to see him. I can't wait. And you got to keep the promise in mind in your pain. It'll help you make it through the tough places in life. And some of you, you can't. You're so focused on the pain. You're like that woman next door. Oh, my God. But you got to know there's a baby. It's on. It's right there. When I held that baby, I got that baby in my arms. I'm telling you, no amount of pain in the world could have affected my love. I didn't feel no more pain. They had to sew me for days. I felt like it didn't matter. All I could see was them beautiful blue eyes and all them sweet little lips. Oh, my Lord. All that. But it was worth it. All the pain I had to go through, it was worth it. And God spoke to me. I, I almost didn't come to Florida. And God spoke to me and said, no, you got to go. Because some of these women, they're in so much pain. They think they're about to die. And God spoke to me and said, you go and tell them that pain may be the midwife to purpose, but for them not to give up. God's about to give you one of the biggest breakthroughs you've ever had in your life. And you wondered if you were ever going to get out of it. You are going to get out of it. It won't always be like that. Some of you got somebody that's been buffeting you uh, and they've been chafing you uh, and they've been giving you hell. Uh, God spoke to me and said if I can shut uh, the mouth of the lion for Daniel, uh, I'm going to shut that mouth for you. Uh, and some of you said, uh, I can't take it anymore. God said, I'm about to show up. Uh, but you got to start praising him uh, right now uh, like it's already done. Uh, real women praise him. Oh, you didn't hear me. Real women praise. Uh, that's what the sacrifice.
That's why I don't ever criticize somebody in the house of God. You know, you, 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 you always see some of these people. You always see some of these people stand. They're like, ah! they're losing everything. Slips, bobby pins, knocking. Some of you, they knocking your hair piece on the floor. I get it. But when I was younger, I used to criticize that. Because I didn't understand. I hadn't lived long enough to experience pain. Some people say, you know, Sister Carson, you, you're really over the top. That's your opinion. And you have the right to be wrong. Because you know why? You never fought my demons. You never lived with the bad family I lived with. You, you, you don't know. You, you, you never might have been rejected. I was rejected my whole life. My own Sunday school teachers didn't believe in me. Nobody, nobody. So I know about pain. I know about pain from people, from leaders, from churches, from family. I know all about it. But one day, I was so tired. Have you ever been so tired? It felt like mentally, I'm going to break. Come on. You ever been under so much pressure? All I knew was running. I had a dream. I had a dream seven years in a row. And I've been very prophetic ever since I was three years old. I, I don't know. I don't understand. I don't know. Some people, everybody gets called different. But I just dream every year. I saw my parents. We were running through the, 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 uh, through the woods. And the devil was, uh, from the waist down, he, well, he was naked. I don't mean it bad. But from the, from the waist down, he was a man. From the waist up, he was a minotaur. You familiar with that? Like a bull? He was chasing me, chasing me, chasing me. And all my life, all my life, I was running, I was running, I was running. I was running, I was running. God, please, please, God, please, please, Lord, please. And God would scatter after all my life. He was reminding me, he's after you. He's after your anointing. And see, see, I'm trying to hurry, please. I'm trying to be thoughtful. Some of you saying, why? Why, why me? Why? I'm nothing. I'm not even pretty. I'm overweight, I'm too tall, I'm too skinny, my teeth aren't straight, my hair's ugly, I, 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 I don't even like my life. Why me? Why? Why me? They make fun of me. They, 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 they don't understand. But it started a long time ago when your mama held that baby. It's going to be okay. Right then, right then, God said, God said, He marked, He marked that baby. The problem was, when He marked you in the Spirit, the enemy saw. That's why some of you didn't get what you needed growing up. Some of you have had terrible home lives. That's why you didn't get the love you needed. That's why your dad left. That's why your mama might have been abusive. Listen to what I'm telling you. Because if I listen to this world, they make everything about a diaper and a pen. Well, you must have been stuck with a pen when, in your diaper, and this is why you, you, you scarred. No. No. It started when God marked you for a purpose, for a promise. So all your life, 
what was what, what was what was Adam and Eve made out of? Tell me. Talk to me, ladies. Dust to the ground. Dust. What was the curse that God gave Satan? Do you remember? He said, on your belly, you're going to go. And he said, what was he going to eat all the days of his life? Dust. Don't you find that interesting? Isn't that interesting? She's going to bruise your head. But you're going to try to get at her all the days of her life. There is something about a woman of we are anointed. You hear what I'm telling you? You're not allowed to tell yourself who you are. You hear me? Stop talking to yourself like that. When people fight you, my husband and I, that's how I raise my kids. This is why I have children in a church that aren't bitter. You want to know how? I never, most, most, most ministries, children, they bitter. More, a lot of saints' kids, same way, right? I mean, we, we all hurt and play. Most of our kids are bitter. The only difference, I taught my kids, it's spiritual. And some people taught their kids, they're just a jerk. No, 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 no. No. Oh, they, they may be a jerk. But it's a spirit they got that drives them to be a jerk. It's the spirit behind the person. So sometimes, no matter how hard you try, the enemy uses people. So the only thing I've got to keep myself is this is a spiritual thing. If I don't, now listen to me. That doesn't give people a license to treat you like dirt and you let them continue to do it. Don't let people do that. But understand, it's a spirit. That's what helps you not be a people hater. You a spirit hater. And so the enemy's doing everything he can to bring so much pain into your life. And some of you, the only economy you ever known is pain. I got it. 52 years, I got it. But one day, trouble's chasing me down. Trouble's, it's chasing me down. It's chasing me down. And I'm running. I'm running, and I've got 600 things chasing pain, pain, it's barreling, it's like an engine, 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 all the time, I'm running, I'm running, running. One day, I turned around, and I planted my feet, now I'm not going to try to hurt you. <laughs> when I turned around, now it's one thing if one piece of pain hits you, but when I planted my feet and said, oh, this is spiritual because if it's physical I'm limited right talk to me if it's physical I'm limited if it's spiritual I'm not because I got a daddy that's spiritual and he's God and he's created all things but if it's spiritual I got hope one day God told me no chase no more girl turn around I turned around and planted my feet that trouble was like wham hit me head forward that thing stopped shook itself and looked at me tried to hit me again I kept my feet planted but from that day forward something happened to me I said devil I might have been a victim all my life but from this day forward I'm God's woman I am anointed and I'm going to make you pay your trouble chase you don't let your trouble eat at you and go the time consume you you gotta turn to the devil and say devil I rebuke you yeah. listen sometimes when I mean business and I know that I'm God's woman but when I really get mad I turn to the devil and I don't tell the devil devil I rebuke you in the
in the name of Jesus. I say no devil. Jesus Christ uh, rebuke you. Uh, you hear me? The word of God uh, rebuke you in the name of Jesus. All of a sudden, I started finding joy in the middle of hell. And I started finding out, like Paul and Silas, I could sing and sing praises. I could clap my hands. I could be in the inner prison. I could be all locked up. I could still be surrounded by people who hate me. And I could sit down and I could say, oh God, you are good. You are gracious. Until then, uh, that the prison doors were opened uh, and they were able to get out. But their pain was producing destiny. Some of you, you can't believe you got destiny. But it's you. It's you. It's you God's calling out. If you've been fighting the enemy, I want you to come to the front. If the devil's been fighting your body, I want you to come. If the enemy's been fighting your marriage, I want you to come. If the enemy's been fighting your health, I want you to come. See, see, see. We all bleed. And if, and if, it just made sense. If he would just explain it to me. But in my darkest places, he says nothing. Because I asked God one time, why won't you heal me? I was praying for five hours on the floor. And it was personal. I love you. Lord, I love you. I don't, I, don't, I don't dress holy because somebody tells me to. Although I believe in following the church doctrine. But I, I dress the way I do because I want you to smile at me when you look at me. I want you to be pleased with me. How I adorn myself. I, I want you to be pleased with me, Lord. And so knowing I pray every day and I fast and read my Bible and I live holy and I don't watch things. And I, don't, I don't even have a TV in my house. But just listen to me. The greater the sacrifice, the greater the anointing. I'm not saying you can't be anointed where you're at. Please, please don't misunderstand what I'm saying. But I'm praying, I'm like, God, Because to me it's personal now. Because I know what I know. I got up off the floor. I was, I was bitter at God. And God spoke to me and said, This is not about me not healing you. And I whirled around. I was by myself at church. And I said, And I'm like, Papa, what it's about? Daddy, tell me. Tell me. He said, Baby, it's about you. I said, what? 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 He said, it's about your faith. I said, I don't understand. He said, well, the devil came again before the throne. And he said, if you'll let me have her, I promise she'll curse you and die. Baby, I told him he wouldn't do it. So see, this is a faith fight. It's not that I don't love you, but there's a pain that's going to produce a promise. From that day forward, I changed my whole Christian walk. Because I said, Daddy, thank you. 
like a little kid. Just to know that he loved me, that it wasn't personal, it wasn't that he wasn't wanting to come through, that wasn't it. He said, it's about your faith. And some of your faith's being tried. But faith that's not tried is dangerous. Faith that's not tried is dangerous. Faith that's not tried, that, that, that's dangerous faith. It's not tested. I want somebody, to, I want every one of you to lift your hands right now. Come on. Come on, I need you to release it to God right now. Come on, some of you are intercessors and you're holding back. I want every intercessor in the house to turn it loose. I don't care what it sounds like. If you got a scream, come on, let it go. Don't hold it back. Come on, don't hold it back. Come on, baby, don't hold it back. Come on, I don't hear crying. Come on, I hear a battle cry.
in just a little bit. Come on, dig in just a little bit. Come on, some of you go find pasture in the wilderness. Come on, dig in just a little bit. Come on, they've been in the wilderness a while. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Come on, the pastures right there. Come on, flowers are right there. Come on, the sun's right there.
Hallelujah. Come on, I want you to stand all over this house. We feel it. You can stand. God is good. Look at me. Look me in the eye. God is good. Say it with me. God is good. Say it with me. God is good. When I experience pain, God is good. When I experience pain, talk good. When they slap me, when they ridicule me, talk to me. I'm going to find you. When they hate me, when they speak evil about me, God is good. And God is good what? All the time. All the time. And you know what kind of makes this go down just a little bit easier? Is if the enemy only knew how much he was helping me. Right? Did you hear me? Right. If the enemy only knew how much he was helping me. I never could have got where I'm at today if it hadn't been for my pain. Pain made me who I am today. Had somebody treat me really bad all my life. Finally, that person showed up. And they said, I'm, I'm, I need to tell you something. The least person I ever expected it from. He said, I'm, I'm sorry. Sorry I did that to you my dad he'd put his knees on top of me as a child he'd straddle me and he'd beat me in the face threaten my life I didn't understand but every bit of pain made me who I am and I've reached people most people can't reach because I've been through some stuff so my dad said I wanted to tell you uh, I'm sorry I grabbed him by the shoulders I said daddy it's okay you'd have to apologize I appreciate it but I need to tell you something now he was crying tears streaming down his face I was like thanks for everything it hurt him a little bit I said daddy everything I went through who I am today. Daddy, you don't owe me an apology. I love you. And it hurt when I was young, but I understand now. I want you to know I love you. I forgive you. But see, I'd forgiven a long time ago. Somebody told me the best apology you'll ever get is the one you never receive. Hear what I'm telling you. Hear what I'm telling you. Thought that was the dumbest comment I've heard in my life. Because that joke goes me an apology. Best apology I ever got. I never received. But my daddy gave me a piece that passed all understanding. I got my apology. It's okay. And I still go through pain today. And I see pain different now. And you're going to see pain different now. You hear me? Some of you got to get out from underneath this load. You did the right thing today. That it is a great woman of God. I got confidence in her. But when you feel this, unload this stuff. It'll help you make it through your road, okay? Come on, if you believe this today, I want you to give God a hand clap of praise. Come on, I want you to do it like you mean it. Come on, is God worthy? Come on, do it like you mean it. Do it like you coming out of a wilderness. Come on, do it like you getting a drink of water. Like you're seeing your Savior for the very first time. Come on, you can do it. Come on, he's good. Wow. 
I don't have anything more to say, but I want to thank you, Sister Court Carson, for pouring out to us today. And take this with you, ladies. You're dismissed. Love you all. See you tomorrow. Thank you.